Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Make sure you click the subscribe button if you like what you see and as usual the content on this channel is based on questions, comments or requests that I get from you guys, the viewers. <laughs> Alrighty, so the question for today. Oh, we have a set of questions. So how do I lock messages to a file instead of the sender output? Okay, so I think she's talking about a logger. So let's start Let's start creating a file. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the logging uh, package. If you don't have this, well, make sure you use pip, pip install logging, and that should do it. The logging is pretty much a package that will help you to what she's asking for, to actually print messages or events into a file instead of the sender output. So we're going to do that. Um, and, oh, look, she's very specific. Is there a way to create a logger that records the following info? Okay, so let me let me copy paste this, what she's asking for. So she's saying, is there a way to copy this? So I suppose it's the month, the day, the year, the hour, the minute, the second, if it's in the morning or in the evening, thread number, file name, logging level, and message. Okay, I suppose this is the thread that is executing the code, and this is the file name where the message is coming from. All right, so definitely there is a way to do that. So the first thing that we have to do is uh, start doing a basic, there is a basic config method in the logging module that will allow us to do this. So, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define the level of this. So we're gonna start with info because info it's the most generic one. We don't wanna do the bug or warning. I suppose that you can change that in your code if you if an exception is thrown then you want to log an error right so we're going to start with the logging level info something something simple then we're going to start with the format and in the format we're we're going to cover things the things that she's asking for so the first thing that she's asking for is the this particular thing the time the month of the day so this are predefined i'm going to call them uh, properties in the basic config info. So this thing will, will take care of this. So you will have to define a string. The format is gonna be a string where you're specifying what you want on that string. This S at the end of um, this property, it's it's just letting know the code that is this is a string, right? It's not a digit, it's a string. So this is gonna cover that. Then we want the following, it's gonna be the process. And this is a D, why? Because this is a digit, it's not gonna be a string. The thread number is usually a number, right? So we're gonna do that followed by the file. For that, we can use file name, again, a string, and then followed by the logging level. So for that, we can use level name, which in this case, it's going to be defaulting to log info for now. String, make sure that you don't you don't you don't leave this this characters out. You have to define those, otherwise you're gonna get errors while trying to execute this. And then finally the message. And this is also going to be a string. Alright, so that's the thing. So this this thing will cover this, but we are not we're not telling the logger which format we want for the date, right? This is just telling it, we want the date here, but we need to specify, we want the month, the day, the year, and stuff like that. So for that, there's another property that you can set that it's called, why is this not a not date format? How, how is it called? Yeah, date for, wait, but it's not liking it. Okay, I see the problem right there. Now, date format, there you go. So let's delete this. And then this one is where we're gonna specify what we want for the time. So we want the month, we want the day, and we want the year. And this backslash is pretty much just to follow what she's specifying here, right? So it's gonna append those backslashes. And then after that, we want the hour, we want the, what is it, the minute? And we want the second. And then we ask, we add this P, and this P is pretty much to to select if it's gonna be AM or PM when this thing is happening, all right? So then we have something called the file name, and this is where we specify where the messages are gonna be going into. We are not gonna print to the standard output, but rather to a file. So here I'm gonna put log info, my log. 
and the file mode it's gonna be a pen. Why I wanted to use a pen? Because you can see that currently in my project that file log info.log does not exist. If I use a pen what it's gonna do the logger it's going to take a look at the directory and say okay the file it's not there so it's going, to, it's going to automatically create it and then start appending to it. If you change this to write, it's also going to work, but as of now, it's going to fail because the file does not exist in the project, so there is no file to write to. So you're going to get an error, right? So I usually always the, the file to append. It all depends on you, how you want to do it, and that's it. Okay, so that's, that's how you do it. So I suppose that now I can start doing logging info. And uh, this is a message. So let's see, let's start running this file. My logger, okay, run. You can see that the file was created. If I open this file, oh, there you go, here it is. So let's copy this and see if we met the requirements that she asked for. So we have the month, the day, the year, the hour, the minute, the second, it's on the PM, the thread number, the file name where this thing is coming from, the logging level, and the but oh, you can see here that here we are missing a space, so this is overlapping. So let's fix that. Let's put that thing right there. Let's see if that fixes. Okay, cool. See the second message now. So you may be saying, okay, this is the second message. Why the first message? It's still there. Well, remember our, our uh, file mode. It's a pen, so we're going to keep appending. If I delete this file and I run. Then we're gonna start clean. There are no messages. There were no messages, there were no files, so we created that one and then start doing this. So I think that's that's what she asked for and that's what she wanted. But then finally we have a third question that says that she, I'm using this with other Python projects that are using the logging package. So is there a way to kind of encapsulate my logger so that I can use it only in my project and not mess around with the other. Okay, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Sometimes when you are working with other packages or, or you have, there's code that somebody sent you, right? And they are using this logging functionality. Uh, it's going to override that because, well, you guys are using the same model. So what she's asking is, can I, can I configure this one and make sure that it, it's it's what I wanted, this the standards that I wanted, and and just call that one instead of using the default one. So for that one, it's a very easy fix. All you have to do is specify a name in your logger. Right? Is it is it name? Is it file name? Yeah, I think it's name. And in the name, you're gonna say my project logger. Okay. So here we're, we're, we're creating, we're giving a name to this one. So instead of using logging directly, now we can do something like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's put it a constant. It's gonna be log, right? So it's gonna be logging, get logger by name. So you specify this name right here. And now instead of using logging, we're gonna use log. And then this is coming, oh, this, is coming from my new logger. So let's see, let's run this. All right, this is coming from my new logger, so it's working as expected. And as you can see now, in your project, you can call this constant and log like that. And, and it has the same functionality. You can log like error. This is an error. Log, warning. This is a warning, so let's run it. You can see level has changed to error, to warning. So this is useful in your code when you are executing things that should not happen and exceptions are thrown. You can, instead of printing the exception, the exception to the center output, you can print it to this particular file. And that way you can see it and you can share that file with developers and take a look at it and see what's going on, right? So I think I cover the three questions that she asked. If I did not cover, please let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll make sure that we improve this, uh, this code, okay? So I guess that's, that's how you create a logger and log into a file. So thanks for visiting guys and see you next time.